In Islam, Amar in Arabic, Maur Persian, Marai Turkish, Mehir also transliterated Mare, Mare, Mare or Mariya is a mandatory payment, in the form of money or possessions paid by the groom, or by groom's father, to the bride at the time of marriage, that legally becomes her property. While the mar is often money, it can also be anything agreed upon by the bride such as jewelry, home goods, furniture, a dwelling or some land. Mar is typically specified in the marriage contract signed during an Islamic marriage. Dawar is the English translation that comes closest to Islamic meaning of mar, as dawar refers to the payment from the husband or his family to the wife, especially to support her in the event of his death. However, mar is distinct from dawar in two ways, one, mar is legally required for all Islamic marriages while dawar was optional, and two, mar is required to be specified at the time of marriage when a certain amount is promised, if not paid immediately, while dawar is not paid until the death of the husband. Mar also can be classified as a form of bride wealth. Described by anthropologists as payments made from the kin of the groom to the kin of the bride, however, mar is paid directly to the bride and not her parents. In fact, as her legal property, Mar establishes the bride's financial independence from her parents and in many cases from her husband, who has no legal claims to his wife's Mar. The terms, dowry and bride price are sometimes incorrectly used to translate Mar, but Mar differs from dowries in many other cultures. A dowry traditionally refers to money or possessions a woman brings forth to the marriage, usually provided by her parents or family, bride price to money or property paid by the groom or his family to the parents of a woman but not to the woman herself upon the marriage. In the event the marriage contract does not contain an exact, specified mar, the husband must still pay the wife an equitable sum. The requirement of a mar is mentioned several times in the Quran and Hadith, the mar is often paid to the bride in parts. The mar amount given to the bride at the signing of the marriage contract is called a muajil emjil which is paid at time of marriage nika, and the portion that is promised but deferred is called a ger muajil ger emjil which is paid after completion of marriage. A deferred promise to pay does not make the full amount of the mar any less legally required. There are differences between the nature of mar, definition of proper contract and conditions of enforceability depending on the regional fiqh and school of Islamic jurisprudence. Etymology and history The word mar is related to the Hebrew word, mohar, and the Syriac word, mara, meaning bridal gift, which originally meant purchase money. The word implies a gift given voluntarily and not as a result of a contract, but in Muslim religious law it was declared a gift which the bridegroom has to give the bride when the contract of marriage is made and which becomes the property of the wife. Among pre Islamic Arabs, a bride price called mar was an essential condition for a legal marriage. The mar was given to the guardian wali of the bride, such as her father, brother, or another relative. In earlier times, the bride received no portion of the mar. Some scholars believe that in the period shortly before Muhammad, the mar, or at least a part of it, was already given to the bride, while others regard its transformation into wife's property as a «revolutionary» Quranic innovation. <laughs> <laughs> Structure of mar A mar is part of every Muslim marriage contract. The mar may be separated into two parts. First, there is the muqaddam, or the prompt mar, which the wife must receive at or immediately after the marriage ceremony. The second part of the mar, called the muakkar, is a deferred and promised amount, payable at any agreed-upon date following the consummation of the marriage. Often the deferred amount is larger than the amount paid at marriage. In theory, the deferred amount is supposed to provide the wife with a means of support, and is associated with the death or divorce of the husband, however this is a more traditional rather than Islamic stance on the matter. The muqaddam should be viewed as importantly as the initial dowry payment as it is an obligation to be fulfilled by the husband and is considered debt if it is not given to the wife within the time frame agreed upon between the couple. The mar in any Islamic marriage contract is a fundamental religious right of the wife, and the husband may not reduce the mar. Even upon the husband's death, the deferred mar is paid from his estate before all other debts, because it is a religious requirement. According to a hadith, the Muslim prophet Muhammad stated the mar should be one gold piece, but the mar amount is often negotiated between the parents or guardians of the bride and groom, also called wali, and the parties often draft mar agreements by filling in the blanks of form contracts that employ standard boilerplate terms. 
The typical mar containing marriage contract consists of the names of the parties, the amount of the mar, a cleric's signature, the signature of two male witnesses, and a disclaimer that Islamic law will govern the marriage contract. In Islamic marriages, assets brought into the union by the wife may only be accepted by the husband after the mar has been paid by him to her. In Arabian world, there are varying interpretations of mar containing marriage contracts, highlighting the differences between Maliki, Hanbali, Hanafi, Shafi, and Jafari schools of Islamic jurisprudence. For example, the Hanafi school holds that if the woman initiates the divorce cool, she cannot receive her mar regardless of whether the husband is or is not at fault, while the Maliki school holds that when the husband is at fault for the divorce, the wife does not forfeit her right to the mar even if she initiates the divorce. The schools also differ over the requisite number of witnesses to the contract. The Hanafi school requires two witnesses on the document for a mar containing contract to be valid, while the Maliki school holds that witnesses are only needed at marriage's publication but not the document. <laughs> <laughs> Differences and issues Mar is similar in legal enforceability to donatio propter nuptias of Eastern Roman law, except some critical differences. Donatio propter nuptias was optional and voluntary, while mar is mandatory and required for all Muslim marriages. Mar is not an optional gift. The other difference was that donatio propter nuptias was a security the groom delivered to bride or registered in her name, at the time of marriage, in exchange for dos dowry that came with the bride. Mar is a religious requirement according to sharia. Under Islamic law, there is no concept of marital property. In Islam, marriage is a contract between a man and his wives. A Muslim man and woman do not merge their legal identity upon marriage. The assets of the man before the marriage, and earned after the marriage, remain his during marriage, and in case of a divorce, a divorce under Islamic law does not require redistribution of property. Rather, each spouse walks away from the marriage with his or her individual property. Divorcing Muslim women who did not work outside their home after marriage, except for the deferred mar, are left with little or no claim on the collective wealth of the couple. The deferred mar is considered a debt owed by the man to the woman, and is owed even if he has no assets. Divorce under Islamic law may take many forms. If a woman wishes to divorce her husband, she has two options seek a tafriq, or seek a kul. A tafriq is a divorce for certain allowable reasons, such as abuse or abandonment. This divorce is granted by a Qadi, a religious judge. If a tafriq is granted, the marriage is dissolved and the husband is obligated to pay the wife the deferred mar specified in their marriage contract. The second method, cool is a divorce without cause, by mutual consent. This divorce requires a husband's consent and it must be supported by consideration that passes from the wife to the husband. Often, this consideration consists of the wife relinquishing her claim to the deferred mar. In contrast to allowable methods of divorce to a woman, a husband may unilaterally divorce his wife, as talik, with no requirement to show cause, nor any intervention by a qadi. However, upon talik, the husband must pay the wife her deferred mar. Western courts have treated mar provisions in a manner similar to pre marital contracts. However, in many cases the courts have considered the validity of the marriage contract in cases such as where proper disclosures were not made at the time of marriage, the bride and groom did not separately consent without duress, and in case the bride or both spouses entered into a child marriage prior to a legal age of consent. References in Islamic texts The Encyclopedia of Islam's entry on Mar states, "...according to a tradition in Bukhari, the Mar is an essential condition for the legality of the marriage, every marriage without Mar is null and void." According to Islamic teachings in the Hadith sayings of Muhammad, Mar is the amount to be paid by the groom to the bride at the time of marriage, some of which may be delayed according to what is agreed upon by the spouses. The Mar is for her to spend as she wishes. It can be cash, jewelry or any other valuable gift. In some cases, per Sahih al-Bukhari volume 7 book 62, number 72, even an iron ring can be mar, surah 4.4, 4.19, 4.20, 4.24, 60.10 and 60.11 of Quran require a groom to give a dower to a bride. <laughs> Modern purposes 
In 2003, Rubia Mehdi published an article in which the culture of mar among Muslims was thoroughly reviewed. Mar is a means of sustenance in case of a sudden death, divorce, or other emergency. Topic. See also. Dower. Dowry, an overlapping concept. Islamic marital jurisprudence. Women and Islam. What is Mar in Iran? Topic References Topic External Links <references>